And a good crowd on hand here for this Class D title game, and we expect it to grow for the double-A game coming up next. That game's scheduled to kick off at 2 o'clock. You know, I bet you don't see many people leave. Probably not. Yep. They got good seats. Stay here. And the Weedsport fans get up and applaud as Jim Scarborough is loaded on to the stretcher. And we're going to go down for an update from Dan Litka. Well, guys, as you saw in the replay, a pretty gruesome injury to number 65, Jim Scarborough. It's his right knee. The paramedics have come on the field to mobilize that knee, and it's extremely swollen. He's in a great deal of pain, and one of the assistant coaches gave him a great big hug, and he's obviously uh, suffered a terrible, terrible injury here. We'll be headed to the hospital for further examination. Back upstairs. All right, thank you, Dan. Our best wishes go out to Jim and his family as the Weed Sport fans looking on. Obvious great concern, Jim Scarborough. A key player, really, on both sides of the football for Weedsport. And a senior. And certainly not the way anyone would want or hope to end their high school career. But hopefully his team can hang on and give him some reason to smile tonight. If they do get the ball back on offense, they've lost both centers. Right? Case and, and Scarborough is now out. As You can see him up in the left-hand corner of the screen as they're giving him a standing ovation here at the Dome as he's taken by stretcher over to the, uh, the waiting ambulance which they have just outside inside the dome and they can get him to the hospital he'll be there in a short period of time but you see everybody giving him a nice hand here as he has played a heck of a game and they have watched a heck of a football game 241 left Weedsport up by one but it's taken a little while to get Jim Scarborough up and off the field both teams have had a chance to get a little rest get some water and Say we got two minutes and 41 seconds left. And sophomore Justin Forbes, number 76, 5'9", 220 pounds, is there to try and fill the void left by Jim Scarborough. How about a situation like that for a sophomore who has obviously not gotten a lot of playing time this year? Step in with 2.41 to go. Has the Warrior defense. Looks to hold off Tuckahoe and win their school's first state championship. And that would make some of the pain of Jim Scarborough go away if they can do that. 19 to 8 first downs, 9 to 2 in this half. Here's Cortijo. Around the corner, got about six yards inside the 30. And took the uh, ball out of bounds, stopped the clock because they do have two timeouts left. But, you know, why use them? And that's the, I think they want to use the perimeter, as we said, coming in. They got a lot of time, but. You know, they eat them up when you're running the football. So. And here's where that time of possession uh, really can pay off for it. They're able to grind this one out right. and use up as much time as possible as they try and get into the end zone or kick the field goal to win this game. Second and four at the 29. Cortijo again. Terry Green. No gain. He lost a yard. They're actually going to give him the line of scrimmage. It'll be third and four from the 29. Nice read by Green. He really came up and rocked him. 160 pounds defensive end. Watch him come down here. Right the inside. Gets off the block of the fullback and the wide receiver and brings him down for no gain. He's outweighed by 45 pounds by Fortijo. Good strong tackle by Green. A big 34 for Tuckahoe. Miller breaks tackles, but then finally buried under at the 29. John Metz coming up, and it'll be fourth down. Give Williams a lot of credit on that. He turned that play inside. Watch number nine on the left-hand side of the screen here. Watch number nine right there. See him keeping him in, and then gets off the block, slows him down, doesn't make the tackle, but he waits to the posse. He comes. Terrific job by number nine, Jeff Williams. That's a defensive end. That's a classic way to play that. Good job by Williams. Just tremendous. And then a great job also by number three breaking the tackle. Miller getting the ball and trying to get something. Fourth and about four. And Tucko forced to use a timeout here. They've got one left. But it's fourth and ball game with 1.32 to play. And too far for a field goal. At this point, it'd be about a 46-yarder. Now they've had good luck with that double handoff. That reverse has been a bread and butter play for them. 
Also the quarterback option where he's got the option to pass or run. Right. The last time he threw the interception but had the man open. Fourth and four for Tuckahoe. Weeds court holds. Brandon Bach on the tackle. Brandon Bach blew that play up. It was the quarterback keeper. Take another look. Melendez keeping this one all the way. Had all the bodies out in front of him, but Bach came in from the outside and then got a lot of help on the inside. Bob Bradkey also in there, big number 71. Yeah, Bradkey did a nice job. He, he came from the other side. He shed that block. And with 1.27 to go. The Warriors a few snaps away from the state championship. Brad Bach first down across the 45. That'll be a timeout while they change the move the chains. And you see the handoff, and he got great blocking. There was a huge hole there. Well, I might put two hands on that ball when you're going down, son. <laughs> he coughed it up earlier in this game. But the Wheats Poor Warriors have persevered, and they're about a minute away. Now it's Brandon Bott. Short game, got about two yards. Timeout. And a timeout for Tuckahoe with 52 seconds left. That is their final timeout. Really, all they have to do is take a knee a couple of times, and this one's over. Look at that extra point play now. Well, <laughs> or we'd be going to OT. You think Cal Moser's... Not a coach. I mean, he knew that this Tuckahoe team was controlling the football. He might not get it back. That's right. He, you know, I, he obviously thought, you know what? Let's take the two while we got the chance to get the two because we may not get the ball back, and I don't want to go to overtime. Their offense has been shut out since the first quarter. The Weedsport offense. But they are still a couple of taking the knees from winning this football game. Well, you talk, the, the kickoff, the, the kickoff return. Uh, and the fact that, uh, you know, they scored early, 14 nothing, and then uh, got the return and then the two-point conversion. Cool ball takes a knee. He'll have to do that one more time. And then the celebration can begin. They haven't even started the clock. Well, they just started the clock with 36 seconds. So there's 23, 22 on the 25-second clock and 30 or so on that. And somewhere I hope that someone's letting Jim Scarborough know what's happening here. That his team is going to hang on and win the Class D state title. As the Warriors let the clock run all take, the way down and take a penalty, take the five yards. Delay, offense, five yards, still third down. Smart, take the delay game, keeps the down the same. And there are going to be some balloons flying around in Wheatsport tonight, as this whole community is here to celebrate. I mean, you look down here, Dale, there might not be anybody left in town. No. Cool ball takes a knee, and that's it. The Weedsport Warriors have won the Class D State Championship 22-21 over Tuckahoe, completing a perfect 13-0 season. And for the first time ever, Weedsport can call itself the state champion. A 21-player roster has gone through the season unbeaten 
13 and 0. And won the state championship. And the head coach is with our Dan Leadka. Hey coach, great call on that two point conversion. What helped you make that decision? Well, uh, we just wanted to go for the win there. We're here to try to win, and that's a good play for us. We've been running a lot of power out of our uh, power eye, and the bootleg kind of caught him. It's a good play for us, and uh, it just happened to work out for us. Congratulations. I'll let you run, Coach. Thank you. Back upstairs. Thank you, Dan, and congratulations to Coach Cal Mosier. And for the fifth straight year, a Section 3 team is a state champion in Class D. As the Weeds Corps Warriors and Tuckahoe Tigers meet at midfield to shake hands. Really just a terrific game. Started out hot for both offenses. Second half, Tuckahoe controlled the ball. They scored the touchdown to take the lead, but on the ensuing kickoff, Brad Bach went 82 yards, and then a two-point conversion, and Weedsport wins it. We're going to take a break and come back, wrap things up here from the Carrier Dome as the Weedsport Warriors are celebrating a state football championship. It should also be noted that the head coaches of both teams will be presented with pullover windbreaker jackets for their entire And you see the awards being handed out the to the Class D state champion, Weedsport Warriors. Head coach Cal Mosier, all smiles now as the big two-point conversion call pays off and Weedsport has a state championship to take home. For their continued support of New York State Championship football. Rawlings also provided new footballs for all state playoff games as well. So when you think Everybody wants a piece of that trophy and well-deserved, hard-earned victory over the Tuckahoe Tigers. Let's go downstairs. Dan Lika has our players of the game. Thank you, Mark. The Kenny Drugs players of the game this week are for Tuckahoe, number 20, Axel Cortejo, and for Weed Sport, number 2, Brad Bach. In addition to recognizing great student athletes, Kenny Drugs is making a $100 contribution in Axel Cortejo and Brad Bach's names to each team's booster club. Kenny Drugs, a century of caring. Axel Cortejo on the night, 30 carries, 189 yards, a fantastic effort. And for Weedsport, number two, Brad Bach. 17 carries, 139 yards, and of course that 82-yard touchdown that led Weedsport to the state championship. Let's send it back upstairs. All right, thank you, Dan. Congratulations to both sides. Weedsport Warriors are state champions. And for the Tuckahoe Tigers, been knocking on the door for three years now, and their last three seasons have all ended in a loss to the eventual state champions in the state semis last year in the sectional finals the year before and now in the state championship game. Let's take a look at the final numbers. And other than time of possession, well, a total offense, I mean, really everything just about in Tuckahoe's favor, except for the turnovers. And remember, they turned it over inside the 10. That's right. And one thing, I, I look at that, I don't think I've ever seen a time of possession that, you know, that much disparity between uh, the winning team and the team that, uh, that lost. I mean, that was amazing. But as we said, they struck quickly. Both teams started off passing the ball for touchdowns, which we didn't necessarily expect. We thought they might be forced into it, but they did a terrific job of throwing the ball. Both teams, I thought, very well coached. They did a nice job. Uh, they just played very, very hard throughout the entire game. Has to be the lowest total yardage total for Weedsport of the season, 214 total yards, but they get the big kick return from Brad Bach, 82 yards, and the two-point conversion, and a thrilling win over the Tuckahoe Tigers. Well, we're off to a great start here at Time Warner Sports. Our first game, a thriller, and the Weeds Poor Warriors are taking home a state championship 22-21 over number two Tuckahoe. For Dan Leak on the sidelines, Dale Drypolter up here in the booth, our producer, director, Jeff Steyer in the truck, and everybody here at Time Warner Sports. Mark Larson saying thanks for watching, and good night from the Carry Dome. Wheat Sport wins it. <laughs>